watching all of that. Quick look meanwhile at the corner of Wall and Broad. Wow. Big day for your money. Stocks surging the day after the Federal Reserve decided to cut interest rates for the first time in four years. So, day after Fed Chairman Jay Powell sent Kamala Harris a 50 basis point election gift and completely contradicted himself on the economy, whatever, the stock market roared. Okay. <laughs> Is he... Is he going to cry? I mean, it looks like he's choking back tears, doesn't it? On the other hand, Jay Powell's 50 bips gift to Kamala Harris isn't a plan. No matter how political Fed Chairman Jay Powell may be with his 50 basis points election gift to Kamala Harris, the person who helped the American economy the most was Donald Trump. You just said is one of the most insanely idiotic things I have ever heard. There's more bad news for former President Trump on top of the mere fact that each new poll risks the Mar-a-Lago walls from being lathered in ketchup. Dramatic movement. My goodness gracious, you know, when Harris entered the race, when Joe Biden dropped out all the way back in mid-July, I know it was months ago, it was only two months ago, folks, she had a net favorability rating of minus 14 points. Just by getting into the race, look where she jumped to a month later at minus three. And this week, for the first time, she popped a positive net favorability rating. That is, more people viewed her favorably than unfavorably. If you had asked me two months ago whether I thought Kamala Harris in the aggregate would ever, during this campaign, pop a positive net favorability rating, I would have said you were crazy. But the fact is, you weren't crazy. I was just not thinking creatively. Kamala Harris has come into this campaign, and the more voters have gotten to look at her, the more they have liked her. It's interesting. Now compare her standing to the last two presidents when it comes to favorability. Yeah. So, you know, the idea that you would have a candidate at this point in this environment having a net positive favorability rating is part of the reason why I didn't think it was possible was because look at Donald Trump's net favorability rating. This is actually higher than he was in the last two campaigns at this point, but still underwater at minus nine points. Joe Biden at minus 14 points here. And this, I think, Harris's initial net favorability rating was kind of tracking with Biden's right because she was the vice president. But as she has gone and out on the campaign trail and become her own candidate, she has been able to pop this net positive favorability rating. And she is the only one of these three who are in positive territory. Set. Well, the stock market isn't doing what Trump had predicted it would do. Imagine that. It seems it's crashing up the way. And as you can imagine, Fox News are taking the news very well. In fact, it looks like many of their hosts are literally on the verge of tears while reporting on the still soaring Biden-Harris economy. So, day after Fed Chairman Jay Powell sent Kamala Harris a 50 basis point election gift and completely contradicted himself on the economy, Whatever, the stock market roared. Well, stocks are higher. Stocks surging today on hopes for a soft landing for the economy after the Federal Reserve slashed the Fed funds rate yesterday 50 basis points. The Dow in market action today up 522 points. The S&P up 95. The Nasdaq up 440. All three major averages hitting all-time highs after the best day for markets since August 5th, that is. The rally also lifting small cap stocks as investors' risk appetite was wedded by the Fed's accommodative stance. Nearly every sector rising, tech and consumer discretionary, of course, but also the SOX index, that's semiconductors, rising 4.8 percent, banks and energy higher as well. Meanwhile, markets are expecting more gas, fully pricing in a 25 basis point cut when the Fed meets in November. 42 percent of investors say it will be another half point cut. Maybe the other critical number I should mention here, the 30-year fixed-rate mortgage moving to 6.09%, down 11 basis points. Back to you. All right. Good report, Jerry Wills. Thanks very much. All good for the Cudlow Trust. Fed Chairman Jay Powell may be with his 50 basis points election gift to Kamala Harris. The person who helped the American economy the most was Donald Trump during the pre-pandemic first three years of his administration. Okay. New census numbers show real median income growth during Mr. Trump's pre-pandemic first three years compared to Joe Biden's overall take-home pay for typical families increased more than five times as much under Mr. Trump than under Biden. Up $6,000.40 for Trump versus just $1,050 bucks 
under Biden Harris. Okay. But it appears that not everyone is enjoying such a boom in the stock market. Shares of Trump media sank as much as 7% Friday morning, hitting a new 52 week low one day after, quote, lockup restrictions expired, which had previously prevented its majority shareholder, former President Donald Trump, and other early investors from selling their shares. Trump, whose major stake in Trump media was worth almost 1.6 billion as of mid morning Friday, said last week that he would not sell his shares when the restrictions lifted. Media shares are down about 75% from their peak in March. Your lockdown provision and soon. Will you sell your shares? No, I'm not selling. No, I love it. I mean, I use it as a, a method of getting out my word. Uh, you know, when it opened, it went way high, but then the SEC gave us nothing but problems. We had to go through a long, long process with the SEC. But people think that I'm leaving. That's why they're down. Because if I leave, you know, it's different if I leave. But I'm not leaving. I, I love it. I think it's great. Uh, mechanically, it works the best. And again, I'm friendly with Elon, and Elon would love me to come over to X, but I just, you know, I have a, close to 100 million people on X. I had 230 million people on X, and then they shut me down, and I said, I'm not going to let that happen again. You know that. I, I had hundreds of millions of people on X and Facebook and Instagram, I think more than anybody. Zuckerberg told me at the White House, he said, congratulations, you're number one on Facebook. And while his comments caused the stock to surge, climbing as much as 25% before closing at around 11%, the slump this week has completely erased those gains. So in a way, it's following suit with his trend in the polls that again, Fox News hosts can't help but admit to no matter how much it pains them to do so. He says, and he's commented a couple of times today, that he, he won the debate, and all the polls show that he won the debate. I haven't seen a single one to show that. What did you think of that reaction? Well, well I have seen those polls. You know, they're not, uh, they're, they're polls that uh, you see on, uh, you know, on the, on the internet. And, um, and a lot of them probably have, uh, have uh, uh, statistical problems with them. Right. But I, I told you a couple days ago that I would tell you when I get nervous about this election. Not there yet, but it's getting closer. And I'm going to be honest with you, it has tightened, Jessica, and that just shows you what an honest broker I am. <laughs> yes. To acknowledge that the race is tightened. Mm -hmm. What a big man you are. <laughs> but then I look at this. I look at the last four polls in Pennsylvania. Donald Trump is either winning or tied. Where's New York Times? I look at the last. I, I look at the last four. And you know, speaking of the economy, any of you happen to have missed the school lesson on inflation delivered by the brilliant Jasmine Crockett? Here's a reminder that inflation, yes, was a global issue, and the United States have actually responded better to it than any other wealthy nation. I'm just curious to know: uh, is the inflation that we just struggled through was that global or was that limited to the United States? Global. Global. Seemingly, it was attached to this thing called the global pandemic. Is that correct? That is my understanding. Oh, okay. So it, it wasn't just the United States. No. Okay, so it wasn't just a matter of the Biden-Harris administration in the United States is struggling, right? I think the United States actually fared better than the rest oh, of the world. Oh, yeah. In fact, we are, correct? I think so, yeah. All right, but inflation still hurts, and so that's why we have a candidate that has an actual plan instead of concepts of a plan. Or as I like to say, um, Trump only has offered concepts of constitutionality mixed with um, coordinations of a coup. The only reason we're having this hearing is because somebody got their feelings hurt in a debate. And I don't understand why we're wasting taxpayer dollars. Next time, tell your big boy to show up and be ready to handle the woman in the room who hopefully will become the next president of the United States. I mean, damn. 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 With that, let's just recap, shall we? Stock market at an all-time high, inflation below 3%, wages outpacing inflation, consumer confidence soaring, violent crime nearing 50-year lows. I mean, no wonder the meltdowns are at a rate of two to three times a day now. Only a woman. I'm not a threat to democracy. I'm the greatest of all time, maybe greater even than Elvis. How great am I? How great was the speech? Not how good. How great was it? It's terrible, it's demeaning, it's horrible, but it's true. Do we have any Hispanics? can't afford an apple. You know, we're conservative and all that, right? Who knows? Kiddingly, kiddingly, kiddingly. So busy. You know, I got a little bit of a yip problem here. Most people don't even know you have that many countries. You actually have over 200, but most people don't know. Whatever happened to Trump? Well, he never got out of Springfield. <laughs> gotta do what I gotta do. Shouldn't call people animals. That's not appropriate. They're animals.
You're living a life like hell. Minions. Harry, get up, Harry. Harry, get your fat ass out of the couch and turn around. Who is he? Name him. Boy, I'm glad I didn't forget you. If it blows up, you're dead. Are you afraid of climate change? I'd say, let's leave Trump alone. And I lost. Vote for Donald Trump. What the hell do you have to lose? Big day for your monies. Hey, Midas Mighty, love this report? Continue the conversation by following us on Instagram, at Midas Touch, to keep up with the most important news of the day. What are you waiting for? Follow us now.